Welcome to Bay Area Independent Filmmakers. I'm your host, Connie Jo Sechrist. My guest today has vast experience in the arts. She has taught music and drama at every level from preschool through post-grad, and for the last few years has been working in the independent film industry as a writer, director, producer, editor, and actress. She is a woman of all trades. Please welcome Darva Campbell from Once Upon a Time Productions. Thank you. Thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. And Darva, um, where did you where did you originally grow up and go to school? I grew up in a very rural area of southern Oregon, right on the California border. My dad's a farmer and a preacher, and there weren't a lot of arts happening, but I did have a, a really great high school uh, English teacher who taught speech and put on some plays, so I got to do a little of that. And my mother's an avid theater goer, so I was in Ashland every summer for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival nice. there. Yeah, I got to see a lot of theater growing up. Um, and I started dancing when I was five. I have some very bad Super 8 films of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I taught dance for a while. I still teach a, a movement and music class every summer. Um, I paint. I do all those arts things. Mm -hmm. Not good at balancing my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> but, good at, but good at all the vast art stuff. Yeah, yeah. Very Renaissance cool. woman. <laughs> Renaissance woman. Yes, that's what I call you, Renaissance woman. Um, now, do you think that because your parents were involved in theater, that's what got you interested in, in music and dance, or what inspired you? Know, you? I, I started taking piano lessons when I was five and played all, I still play. Um, when I got to college, I got a music scholarship, mm -hmm. which is probably why I majored in music instead of uh, English, because I've, I'm, a, I'm a writer and I've always been a writer. So that was kind of where I was headed. Um, but I ended up in music and got it, started doing theory composition and decided halfway through, wait, no one will pay me for this, <laughs> and changed my major to uh, performance and then decided, wait, no one will pay me for this either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then finally went into education and did a, my education degree and then my master's also in education. And then went to get my doctorate and did all of that in music. But meanwhile, on the side, I had started choreographing musicals. Mm. And that's kind of what got me into doing theater myself as as an active participant rather than as a, an observer. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some musicals in college. I went to Pepperdine and did West Side Story there and um, always loved them. Didn't always have a lot of opportunities because where I went to, I graduated from a very small liberal arts college called Columbia Christian and there was no drama program there. So you know, I did what I could and when I graduated I got involved in community theater and I started choreographing musicals for high schools locally wow. who, that had really huge programs yeah. um, that had thousands, tens of thousands of dollars for their productions. Wow, I wish more than we my have high now. School had that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, their productions were better than anything I've ever seen on Broadway, and I've been to a lot of Broadway shows. <laughs> <I bet you have. laughs> uh, so they mentored me really mm -hmm. into into the business and. I started doing makeup and teaching uh, the kids, the high school kids, how to do their makeup for their stage productions. That's right. You do makeup, too. I do. Yeah, you and do everything. <laughs> that's how I got involved in that. Well, actually, you know, doing makeup is like painting. It's the yeah. same thing, only your canvas is not flat. Um, but it's all about light and shadows and, and color, and it, it, it all goes together. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I started, and then uh, through the years as I taught, I ended up being in charge of the performances, and so a lot of times I wrote performances, wrote plays to service the students who I was teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so I've literally directed in 32 years, hundreds oh. if not thousands <laughs> of plays of all variety from full blown out musical theater to um, tiny little first grade performances <laughs> uh, where they yeah. do cocoons turning into butterflies or <laughs> the cycles of nature. <laughs> uh, right now I am directing uh, tri-school productions 
fall plays. Great. I've been doing that for a few years, and we're doing uh, Wingman this year, which is based on Cyrano. Okay. Um, and I wrote it and am nice. directing that this fall. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, please let me know when it is. I, I wanna, will. I you have come to come. Yes. <laughs> when did you move to the Bay Area, and what kind of um, pushed you to this area? Well, I was. I taught the university for the last 16 years of my educational jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I was at Chico State for 12 years, and then I went to UNLV, and then I got married to uh, my childhood sweetheart, who is from the Bay Area. Cute. So I left left my profession and got married and. Uh, I have an autistic stepson, mm -hmm. and so I spent the four years, the first four years I was here um, running his program and, and trying to help him come out of that tunnel of autism. And then I looked around and went, mm, now what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my husband, uh, Gil, Gilbert Papazi in the second, has a degree in cinematography oh, uh, from okay. USC. So that's probably what kind of pushed you more into the filmmaking Definitely. industries because your husband had vast experience with that. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was always his dream to make movies. And he went to USC and got his degree there. And he was working in the industry. And then his dad had a heart attack. And he came home to run the family business. 30 some years ago <laughs> and yeah. never had gotten back into filmmaking. Oh, okay. So I had, I was writing a play and the play was based upon a real story because my husband's siblings, uh, his sister was a screenwriter mm -hmm. and she'd written many screenplays and her latest one, she was trying to sell it and not having luck and was rewriting and rewriting and going everywhere and not having luck selling it. And she appeared one day at my door with a script in a leopard skin covered box, that, you know, that fake leopard fur, yeah. <laughs> and a glittery purple bag over her arm. And she swept into my house and said, where's your shovel? What? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Almost exactly that look like, right there. Huh? <laughs> and she, um, she said, I need to bury this in your yard. <laughs> and I said, well, what is it? And she said, it's the script. And, and I have consulted my psychic. And she said, bury it, and it will bring forth the green fruit of your labor. <laughs> So she took my shovel, she went out in the backyard, all dressed in her white linen, <laughs> and buried somewhere a screenplay. So you don't know where it in is? In my backyard, I don't know where oh, it is. Okay. My husband swears up and down he's found it, but we're afraid to dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> Bad so the next thing that happened was, exactly, <laughs> yeah. the next thing that happened was my mother-in-law came over to the house and sprinkled salt all around oh my goodness. the house <laughs> to protect us from yeah. the evil juju of the screenplay. And I'm looking out the window and thinking, this is the screenplay. This is the story, <laughs> yeah. So I wrote Writer's Cramp originally as a stage play because that was my background. And I got it done and said, you know, I need to find somewhere to produce this. This is funny. <laughs> and my husband helped. We went on a trip to Hawaii and started it and, and then didn't look at it again for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. then when I looked at it again, I realized this really is funny. And so I finished it. And uh, when I got it all done, my husband said, well, you know, we, it, it could be a stage play, but you'll never make any money on it if yeah. it's a stage play. Yeah. Um, it's so, a lot harder to do as well. Yeah. So why don't we turn it into a movie and uh, then we could have a movie and perhaps sell a movie and um, make another movie. <laughs> <laughs> and continue your fourth. So I had a fabulous agent who worked for uh, Star's agency. She's since moved, but her mm -hmm. name was Connie Hall. And she came over and spent a lot of time with me teaching me the difference between writing a stage play and writing a screenplay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Stage plays are all about dialogue and there's very little action because you're doing it in a, a little black box. <laughs> and movies are all about action and they're yeah. not about dialogue. So this is not, it's, it didn't turn out like talking heads. There is some action in this movie, but I do think it reveals its stage play origins 
just in that the dialogue is very witty and, and snappy, and it's a dialogue-driven play. I, I wrote Writer's Cramp and produced Writer's Cramp. We shot Writer's Cramp, and then it wasn't until we got into the post-production process mm -hmm. that we started making shorts and doing, doing other, other things. things. Yeah, and we and we actually started by helping some other people out with the 48-hour film project. Yeah, and then that was so fun, although it wasn't fun to be not in charge. <laughs> Because you, I, you've you done some 48-hour film projects. Well, yeah, you helped me out. You helped me out exactly. with my project um, <laughs> last year. You know, I brought you on as a makeup artist for that. And, and I, that was very well run and awesome. a lot of fun. Thank you. But they're not always that way. Yes. You know, sometimes yes. they're new to producers. They don't really know what they're doing. I was in one project where no actors came. Oh, boy. And so it left me calling all of the actors I knew to get actors to set. And I was the makeup artist on that shoot. <laughs> so having to step out of that role to just try to get the production underway. So then we started doing 48-hour film projects ourselves yes. with the team that we had gathered. And frankly, we've discovered that it's a great way to meet new talent, new crew. You get to see how they work under pressure mm -hmm. because you've only got 48 hours, so you're under pressure. And we want it to be fun. If it's not fun, we don't want to do it. <laughs> Very true. So, so it's a good place to meet new crew and uh, for our bigger projects because of course we have a couple more features in the pipeline just waiting for writer's cramp to be launched so awesome. we can, yeah well it is on. it is in festivals right now how is it how is it doing it's doing great we've yeah. been um, we started in Maryland at the Maryland International Film Festival in uh, March, the very end of March. Okay. And actually the movie was finished just a couple of days <laughs> before we got to that festival. Usually what happens. And I will <laughs> say the sound was not completed. We didn't have our final sound yet. Mm. Um, but we were there and it was good and we met our sound guys while we were there because <laughs> we saw a movie that they'd done so brilliantly that that was a great, great like, place to meet them. I need them. your help. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so then we went to Fort Myers Beach to the film festival there, and we won Best Feature Film. Awesome! I know! Congrats! <laughs> that is amazing! It was, this is how amazing it was. I had, uh, I was really tired. I'd stayed out perhaps at after parties the night before, <laughs> could be. <laughs> there is some fun to be had at these film festivals. Yes. And it was about 110 degrees in Florida, so it was very hot and oh, humid. Geez. And the, the the award ceremony was held outside and so I walked about a mile from the theater where the movies had been shown down to where the awards were happening. Oh my god, just, 110? Yeah, oh, I just did not geez. realize it was going to be that far. Yeah. So by the time I got there I was just tired and melting and having a heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> So I was sitting with my back to the stage right in the very front, right next to the stage and mostly fanning myself <laughs> while heat, the awards heat festival. Heat exactly. exactly. Yeah. I had stuffed up ice cubes all around me from the beer cooler because <laughs> <laughs> I was so hot. Oh my God. <laughs> Cooling myself off with ice cubes. And I was just clapping, and the awards are happening back there, and I'm clapping, and they're introducing everyone from the festival. And every time everyone else would clap, I would clap. And then I would go back to fanning myself with the program. And Finally, maybe 15 minutes into this, the guy sitting across the table from me said, no, no, you should go up now. And I went, oh, <laughs> thanks. And he said, no, no, seriously, you should go up now. They just called your name. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> For the award. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know what's going no, on. I was clapping. <laughs> So I jumped up and I went to the stage, but I didn't know what award I'd won because <laughs> I had not been listening, oh had God. not even heard my name. So they handed me this statue made of glass, and I, I didn't have my glasses on, so, oh, so you were blind. I as couldn't well. see what I. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I put my glasses off my head and put them on, and I was so. I said, uh, and <laughs> here's a direct quote. Oh dear. Now I think I'm supposed to make a speech, but first I'll have to pick all my teeth up and put them back in. <laughs> <laughs> From there nice. we went to the Manhattan uh, Film Festival, Manhattan International Film Festival, and uh, we won Best Original Screenplay there. Wonderful. So, so it's, it's doing really good. 
Yes, so far. Good responses. So far, so good. And you brought in you brought in uh, your trailer, right? I did. To show? Yeah. Okay. Can we show that trailer? Yeah, let's see the trailer. I finally figured out a way to kill the old geezer. Nicotine poisoning. And an asteroid. Three little drops, and we'll be together at last. Just you. <laughs> me. <laughs> all of that glorious money. It's your favorite champagne. Oh, boy. The perfect murder. It's time to stop sucking off the family tit. He's making a new will. You've come to ask for some cash since your feckless husband didn't succeed. No, how can you say that about Scotty? He's full of feck. A celebrity drink me thinks. What's your poison? Oh, wait, I remember. Well, I guess your money really is our money. <laughs> Writer's cramp. The, the story is about a couple of writers who buried a screenplay in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is based technically uh, <laughs> on a real story. <laughs> yes, I really do have a screenplay buried in my yard, and that was the impetus for the story. So while the characters really don't resemble anyone in real life, mm -hmm. um, they were based upon people that I know. Um, and we get to see snippets of a whole bunch of really terrible screenplays <laughs> that they've written. <laughs> Not that my sister wrote, but that yeah. these characters wrote. So we saw snippets of Santa sleighs, and we saw snippets of a Midsummer Night's Scream. And <laughs> oh, Midsummer Night's Scream! <laughs> yes, they're <laughs> all little plays yeah. there. Um, yeah, so Cute. it's like going to see maybe twelve movies all in one movie, which made costuming so much fun. Oh yeah, and the main character has a very tenuous grasp on reality. <laughs> she is an actor at heart, uh -huh. and so every day when she gets up, she costumes herself oh, wow. for whatever she's going to do that day. Okay. And you know, we all do that. I, mean, I put on a dark dress because I was going to come and be interviewed today. Yeah, I mean, we, it's we, true. When I'm going to teach my kids at school, I put my Crocs on and my tights and I sit on the floor and I wear dancer's clothes because I'm dancing and moving a lot. Yeah. So we do costume ourselves every day for whatever it is we're going to do. Very true. Um, but she's a very much exaggerated version of that. So if she's going to go bury the screenplay, she dresses like a witch. And when she's going to go meet with the psychic, she dresses like a gypsy. And <laughs> the rest of the time, she pretty much wears 1950s homemaker costumes. <laughs> so it was very fun that to sounds, costume her. Yeah. And yeah. How, how long did it take from, you know, writing the script to... Filming to post production. You know, it it from the very inception, I'm going to guess it took five or six years. Wow. Um, because see, I see I, people, it takes a long time to make films. <laughs> yeah. People don't it, realize that. Whenever I tell them, like, no, it takes years to make films, they're like, what? It's a process. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first 40 pages I wrote in 10 days in Hawaii, but then I set that script aside and didn't touch it for two years. And then I went to Hawaii again a couple years later and took it with me and so went. So it's like Hawaii inspires you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's when I have downtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good writing time. Um, and brought it back and then I really started hitting it hard. Mm -hmm. And it took me about a year and a half then to not complete the script. The script wrote itself once I sat down to do it. Mm -hmm. But rewrites and rewrites and editing and rewrites and rewrites and yes. then the rewrite that you have to do after that rewrite was just a very, very long process. Mm -hmm. um, and then production, it took, we, we did a Kickstarter trailer. Okay. And so that was the first thing that we produced and it took us three days to shoot that and about probably $5,000 in crew costs. Mm -hmm. And um, we raised 50000 a little more, on Kickstarter. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing for an independent film. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but just so you know, that's your friends and family supporting you, really. It's this, not really a whole bunch of strangers giving you money. Yes. Very small percentage of that came from people we did not already know. Very true. But or it's, our but friends it's, did not know. It's good to know that your friends and family out there are very passionate about what you're doing and are willing to you know, help and support you in your in your arts. And and what's, you know? it's been fun in a way because a lot of them didn't have any confidence that we could do it, and but they were supportive anyway because they love us. Yeah, <laughs> and now they're just thrilled to, when they see it because it's actually really a good movie. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> um, so that we did the Kickstarter trailer. It took us about six months to get that trailer edited together and to get our Kickstarter project underway and completed. Uh, we ran it for thirty days, but it took about five months to just get ready and get all the pieces in place to run it. You have to already have social media in place mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you can start doing your Kickstarter. You have to have a way to spread the word about it. So it, it's a process. Very true. Um, and then we finished in April and we started shooting in June. So that was a quick time. Yeah. But we shot, uh, we didn't finish shooting until I'm going to say probably the next January or February, maybe even March, before we had everything in the can. We completed most things by November, mm -hmm. so within that, that summer time. Um, but all sorts of things happened. Uh, at one point, one of our actors was held up at gunpoint. What? Um, and robbed in Oh my god. In Not Oakland. while you guys were filming. The night before. The night before we you had were a big scene. In fact, it was Boys. the night before the big scene where she kills someone. <laughs> and so ironic. She, <laughs> exactly. So she called and we had about fifty extras coming that night to film the ballroom scene, the black and white scene that yeah. we saw a little bit of. And she called at about eight in the morning and said, I can't do this. I'm just now getting to bed. Um, the cops have just left and I'm exhausted and there's oh, yeah. no way, I'm so upset, there's no way that I can come and kill someone tonight. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but of course we already had our crew there. We would plan to shoot at the high school that day. So we did a film class at Burlingame High School um, with their theater department. So that was cool. And had to postpone it. I had to get a hold of all the extras and tell them not to come. But Everything that happened like that, and there were many things, not quite so dramatic as being held up at gunpoint, but many things that happened that we lost locations or, you know, things like that. Yeah, stuff, um, hap stuff happens. Exactly. Someone yeah. couldn't shoot with us because they had another project that conflicted, mm -hmm. and so we had to find another actor to cover that part. You know, just things like that that happened. But every single time, it turned out better. Yeah. Because we couldn't shoot the ballroom scene that night. I was then able to get Megan Joy from American Idol and Quinn Allman, who's the lead guitarist for The Used, mm -hmm. to come and be our ballroom mu musicians. And they gave us music. Uh, we did some music videos with them while they were here. And they were, they're so good. Megan Joy is so amazing. And she wouldn't have been part of this if... Christy hadn't been held up at gunpoint, and <laughs> uh, we hadn't had to put off shooting mm -hmm. to another time. We ended up in a better location than we would have had had we shot on time. So every single time things that you could have considered bad mm -hmm. happened, in terms of the production, it worked out better for us. Yeah, I mean, I always believe that things happen for, for a, reason. a reason. Even if it's even if it's bad, you know, there's always a good resolution from it. Yeah. So it's all perfect, exactly yeah. the way it is. And, the, and stuff is going to happen on set. Yeah. It's, it's just going to happen. I mean, <laughs> as a filmmaker, we know, we know <laughs> stuff happens all the time. There's no, there's no perfect production at all. <laughs> like, a production does not go smoothly. Um, there's always something that, that gets tied into things. Yeah, something happens. Always yeah. something. And, but in my experience, that something... The, I, I say the cause is in the future. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this is happening yet, but sometime I'm going to look back and go, oh, that's why that had to happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which brings me to my next question, um, and my last question for you is, what's, what's your favorite process of the filmmaking? I 
Oh, it's so hard to pick. Uh, of course, I love directing actors because that's what I've done mm -hmm. basically my entire adult life. And I love people. I love trying to pull out of them the, the emotion or the, the story and collaborate with that. So I love that. And I didn't know that I loved editing because I hadn't planned to edit Writer's Cramp, but mm -hmm. because of all these things that happened, <laughs> that we, like we just talked about, it didn't go smoothly, and I ended up editing the, the film. And what I learned in the editing chair is that the editor is the one who really, truly decides what the movie's going to be. They, the the takes they take, the, the, the order that they put things in, mm -hmm. it, that is the movie, not the directing. And so I'm very grateful that all those things happened and I ended up having to be the editor for my movie as well because I really got to oversee the details of it. And I must love it because when I'm editing, I will edit for 30 hours in a row without realizing that, oh, geez, I probably should sleep at some point. Um, so working with actors and editing, those are tied. Yeah. <laughs> for <Great>. first place. <laughs> And where could where could one go to get information about Writer's Cramp? Do you have a website or Facebook page? We do. Our website is writerscrampmovie.com. Uh, and if you just Google Writer's Cramp Movie, we are very easy to find. Um, we're on IMDb, and um, you'll find our website. We keep it updated with where we're playing next. And actually, you'll be able to see it very soon here in the Bay Area. Really? Yes. Um, we've gotten into some more film festivals that we haven't been to yet. And one of them is the California Independent uh, film Festival. In San Francisco? In San Francisco, yes. Great. So our film will be playing September 11th okay. at 9 p.m. So Great. it's Friday night, perfect time perfect. to go to a movie. And it will be playing at the Ream New Theater in um, Moraga. Okay. So it's over here on the East Bay. Wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for coming in and, and joining me on my show, and I wish I um, could talk more with you, but I want to have you back here uh, soon because I want to continue to hear more about your progress and your filmmaking and what you, what you have coming up next. Sounds like fun. Great. <laughs> Thanks.